Hello and welcome. Lovely you could join me. My name's Rani Hughes and I'm here to share some Tai Chi with you. Uh, so lovely you invite me into your home and welcome into my home, into my lounge room. I would like to introduce two of my friends with me today. This one, Sherlock and Stella. Um, as you can see, my dog's the same colour as my carpet. So when we think about keeping lovely and safe doing our Tai Chi, we need to ensure we have clear surfaces around us um, so we don't tread on dogs or things like that. In the Tai Chi classics, they talk about how much space do we need comfortably to be doing our Tai Chi. We need enough space for an ox to lie down on. So how big is an ox? Basically, if you put your hands out um, and do a little circle around you, that's how much space we'll be needing to do our Tai Chi. So hopefully you can find a space that um, is clear surface, the temperature is okay, it's not too hot, it's not too cold, and that you can hear me clearly. It is really important that you work in your comfort zone. You're the experts about what works best for you. I'm just here to share and to guide the Tai Chi with you. We will be learning a Tai Chi form together called Tai Chi for Rehabilitation. So Tai Chi for Rehabilitation has been developed by Dr. Paul Lam and his team of experts. The word rehab means different things to different people. For example, in America, often rehab refers to like a drug and alcohol sort of rehabilitation. Whereas in Australia, it's often indicating someone's had a hip replacement and they're sort of rehabbing um, more on a physical level. Dr. Lamb considers rehabilitation is when we've had a challenge, it might be a health challenge or it might be a psychological challenge, and when we've had that challenge, it's the sort of turning towards wellness. So it's that point of that turning towards. So we might be rehabilitating from a pandemic. <laughs> we might be rehabilitating from, um, you know, perhaps we're, we've lost a loved one and we're grieving. And so that sort of turning towards wellness. So. I think we all have something that we're rehabilitating towards. So I think this program is applicable to us all. What we'll do every session is the same warm ups. Um, we start at the very top of our neck and we methodically work through major joints of our body. And that's just a lovely way to, you know, ensure that all of the body is being connected with and warmed up. We'll try to learn about one movement per session um, and then we'll always finish with cool down and a very short reflection together. So that will be the format of our sessions. I would like to talk a little bit about today's session. As I said, we'll be doing the full warm ups today because it's the first time we've met each other. It will give you an opportunity to really slowly enjoy and ensure that you're safe as you're learning these warm ups. And then we'll be learning the commencement form, but also one movement called open and close. So the open and close movement will pop up again within this form. It comes out of the Sun style Tai Chi, which doesn't mean a lot to some people, but for others that might mean something. So the Sun style Tai Chi has a lot of healing qualities to it. Um, and it really encourages us to breathe and to move, um, experience the Chi or the energy flow in the body. So I would love to invite you now to either stand up or if you do prefer to sit down, um, or perhaps even lie down to join me for the warm ups. If we are standing, as I said, it's so important to have a very clear surface. So to make sure there's no loose mats around or cords you can uh, trip on or dogs you might fall over. And I do also encourage you to grab a chair for your balance. Some of the warm ups will be standing on one leg. And I'm not sure what my balance is like today and perhaps you're not so sure about your balance. So we do need a sturdy chair beside us. Um, 
So I'll invite you to begin by standing up and placing the chair like I have it. So, thinking about our warm up exercise, just focusing standing tall. Feel the feet connected with the earth. Our feet are parallel and underneath the hips. If it's comfortable having our toes facing straight ahead, so the hips, the knees and the ankles are all going the same direction. We have our arms just resting beside us. And we'll start with our neck exercise. We'll start at the neck and methodically go through every major joint of our body, doing two exercises per major joint. So the first one for the neck, is looking down at the fingers and allowing the arms to float up to about shoulder height or whatever is comfortable for us. We turn the hands and when I sink my elbows, the hands come towards my chest or my chin. I tuck my chin in, turn the palms away and push forward. And then remembering it's a neck exercise as the arms float down, I watch the fingers coming down to rest on the thighs. We do about three of each. So let's try that again. Arms floating up. Lovely. Hands in towards the chest or the chin, tucking the chin in, then we lengthen the upper spine. Turn. Push the hands forward very gently, allowing gravity to bring, lower the hands down. And third time, noticing when we breathe in and noticing when we breathe out. Noticing your own in-breath your own other breath. Terrific. The second one for the neck begins in the same way. Both arms float up. I'll be in mirror. So you turn your left hand over and let the right hand float down to just push down next to my hip. These fingertips are about shoulder height or whatever's comfortable and the elbow is down. So I turn my neck, I turn the arm, just about 70% of my capacity. And I move the hand and the neck back to the center. The top palm faces down, the bottom palm turns up and I swap my hands over. Excellent, so now turning the neck, turning the arm, just about 70% of our capacity. And moving back. Good. Top palm down, bottom palm up, and swap our hands up. This time, if it feels right, we can go to maybe 80% of our capacity as we turn the neck. And moving back. Good. One palm lower, one palm right. And last one, turn, and moving back. Wonderful. Okay, let the hands float down beside the legs, and we just roll the shoulders. These are the next ones for our shoulders, which is the next major joint. So it's like I draw circles on my legs. So we want to relax the elbows, just very small rotations of the shoulders forward. Always doing what feels right for us, working in our comfort zone. And then very small rolls backwards. Again, I love the description of just drawing circles on our thighs. It encourages our shoulders to do the movement instead of our elbows. Well done. The next one for our shoulders is we step a little wider, maybe our feet are under our shoulders now. 
And this one's called gathering chi or just the shoulder exercise. So imagine there's a big ball in front and we go around the outside of the ball. When the hands are on top of the ball, then we sink into our legs and we push the ball down. Good, and let's try that again, palms up. So gathering the breath in as the arms rise up to shoulder height, whatever's comfortable, and sinking into the legs. We keep our spine upright, let the hands float down. Lovely, let's try that again. Arms rise up and lower down. Terrific. And relax, have a little shake. Okay, we'll bring our feet back underneath our hips. So we've worked our neck, we've worked our shoulders. So the next major joint is the spine. So the next two are for the spine. Having your left hand on top, right hand underneath as though you're holding a ball. What we're going to do is turn, imagine a piece of string between my nose and belly. And if my piece of string turns, that is just a very small turn of the spine and the arms will follow the turn. You can see my lovely white zip, <laughs> um, that if I keep my nose and navel connected, the zip remains straight. But if I actually twist and move my neck more, then my um, zip will also twist. Uh, so imagine we've got a zip in front of us. So left hand on top, right hand underneath. We keep the hips soft, the knees soft, sinking down into the earth. I turn the nose and the navel, very small turn, and then I roll the ball. Now I've got the right hand on top. So I turn my nose and navel towards the right and the arms simply follow the turn of the spine. Wonderful, roll our ball over. Left hand on top, top hand's about heart height and bottom hand is just below the belly button. Elbow is down, turning our nose and navel and roll the ball. Good. And turn the nose and navel. So the hips are not moving. The kneecaps are not moving. Roll our ball. And turn the nose and navel. And last one, either side turn. And keeping the palms opposite as we roll the ball. Good. And back to the top. Great, have a rest. The next one for the spine is imagine the top of the spine is pulling upwards, but the base of the spine is pulling downwards. So we want the spine to lengthen in both directions. How do we do that? We're still holding our ball. So if your left hand's on top, we let the bottom hand come up the inside and the top hand down the outside. We roll the hand up and if it's comfortable, the top palm up towards the ceiling and the bottom palm presses down. We always keep a lovely bend in our elbow. We come back and we hold the ball. If that doesn't feel right in your shoulders, don't do it. Just go to where it's comfortable for you. Bottom hand up, top hand down, like that martial arts block. One hand up, one hand down. Lengthening the spine up and down. Good. Changing over. So, bottom hand up. Rotate the palm away, lovely spiraling up, pushing down and change. Let you hold the ball in between and then the bottom hand comes up the inside, rotates up and down. Good, try to keep the knee soft even when the arms are extended. Or the arms are stretched, the arms are never fully extended. We 
release, keep our joints soft. Soft knees, soft elbows, stretching and change. Final one, stretching up and stretching down. Wonderful and have a rest. Well done. So from the spine, we move to the hips. The next two are for our hips. The first one is for the flexors and extensors of our hip. So the muscles at the front and the back of the hip. We're going to be standing on one leg. So if you feel a little bit wobbly, I encourage you to grab a chair and just place the chair beside you like I've got it. Then if I need to hold on to the chair, it's there for me. If I don't need the chair, that's okay as well. So we start with our feet again, hip, knees and ankles facing the same direction, allowing the arms to float up about shoulder height. As they lower down, shift the weight onto the right leg and we move the left foot forward, touch the heel. Good. And then the foot comes back to the center and I stretch the foot behind resting on the ball of the foot as the arms float up. Coming back to the center and consciously shifting our weight. Other side, so if you need to hold on, please do. Here, let's hip width apart. It increases our base of support, improves the balance. Ball of the foot behind, the spine is upright. Feel the hip stretch, good and consciously shift our weight over. The leg I'm standing on, the knee is slightly bent. Touch the heel of the hand, heel of the foot. All of the foot arms float up. Well done. You might notice we're a little better balanced on one side of the body than the other. Good to pay attention to here. And all of the foot. Consciously shifting our weight, heel, and all of the foot. Final one, consciously shifting the weight, heel. If you want more stretch, pull your toes up. And all of the foot, if you want more stretch, push your heel down further. It doesn't touch the ground, but just feels that stretch. Well done. The next one for the hip is for the muscles on the outside and the inside of the hip joint. So what we need to do is we keep our feet parallel to activate those muscles. So the movement is simply step to the side. All of my weights on my stabilizing foot, this leg is empty, there's no weight. So the feet are parallel. They come back to the center and consciously shift the weight. All of the weights on my stabilizing leg, so my other leg goes out, touches on the ball. Fabulous. When we add our arms, we have one hand forward, just below shoulder height. Turn that palm away, and the other hand pushes against, as though you're pushing against a wall, and the opposite leg goes out. as a lovely diagonal stretch. And then I bring the hand and the foot back to my center. Other side, hand forward, palms away, lower than the shoulder. Other hand underneath, opposite leg goes out. Wonderful, and coming back. So it's a lovely diagonal stretch, keeping our spine upright and change. Try to encourage the feet to be parallel. Then we do uh, work the muscles on the outside and the inside of our hip. And change, noticing when we breathe in and noticing when we breathe out. Let's do one more. I decide and I'd like to really show you the arms a little clearer. So from the side, they might look like that. Well, some people find both fingers pointing forward is more comfortable. So whatever feels right, hand up or fingers pointing forward, but they don't go beyond our shoulders. We come back 
and we push to the side, so either fingers up or fingers forward, whatever works for you. Okay, well done. Moving down from our hips into the knees. So we have very loose fists in our Tai Chi. So with our hands, you can actually see through your fingers, they're very loose. And what we do is we shift our weight. We step forward, let's step forward with our left foot. Heel, it's about hip width apart, ball of the foot down. And then I bend the front knee, but only so I can still see my front toe. That's how I'll weight shift. And the opposite hand pushes forward and the other hand pulls back. Good. Weight back and foot back. Changing over. Touch the heel. Nice and wide step. Not long, but wide. Toes down. As I bend the front knee, that's how I weight shift, pushing one hand forward, the other hand back. If I glance down, I can always see my front toe. Excellent, weight back, hand back, foot back. And change. Heel, toes straight ahead, then all of my joints are going the same direction. Weight forward, back heel is down, spine is upright. Weight back and foot back. And change. Heel, toes. We end up with about 70% of our weight forward, but there's still that 30% of weight in the back foot. And let's do one more either side. Heel, toe, weight forward, hand forward. Weight back, hand and foot back. Final one. Heel, toe, shifting out. And moving back. Fabulous. All right, the next one for the knee, very similar, but it could either be a kick or just a knee bend. So again, if we've got a chair or something we might need to hold on to, please do so. And what we do is shift our weight into one leg. We're going to bend one knee and then we'll just tap down on the ground first. So my weight's back, but I've just tapped the toe on the ground, opposite hand forward. I bend the knee and bring it back. Changing over, I bend the knee and I tap on the ground, opposite hand forward. And I bend the knee, moving back. Again, we must remember to keep the spine upright, keep our head upright, bending our knee and stretching. You're welcome to kick off the ground or tap on the ground, bending, coming back, whatever's safe for you to do, whatever feels right, bending and extending. Again, you might notice one side of your body has better balance than the other. Hopefully Tai Chi will improve your balance over our sessions together. One, last one. Bending and stretching. And coming back. Okay, our final major joint is our ankle. So putting all of the weight into one foot and we just tap the heel and the ball of the foot. So it's flexion extension of our ankle. Most people will look at the foot that's moving, but what's really good is to keep the head upright, bring your awareness into your ankle. It helps to develop, it's called proprioception, knowing where your body is in space. Okay, changing over. So all of the weight on one side, and again, if you need to hold onto a chair for balance, please do. And heel, toe, keeping our head upright, but awareness into our ankle. Great, nice, slow, conscious movements of the feet. Roll down. Okay, the next movement is again, all of the weights on the stabilizing foot. And I simply tapped on the middle toe, tapped on the big toe. 
or some people find it more comfortable to tap on the outside of the heel, the inside of the ball of the foot. So it's just moving the foot side to side um, in whatever way feels right for you. Good. Again, there's no weight on the foot that's moving. All of my weights on my stabilizing leg. Consciously shifting weight. If I need to hold on for balance, please do. Or even sit down. That's fine as well. Outside, inside. Outside, inside. Outside, inside. Good. Our last major joint actually are our hands. So we simply extend the fingers and relax. Breathe in. Open and open. Okay, that's the warm up. So we go through the first movement, which is our open and close. Some of you know this, others, your first time. So the open and the close is a Sun style movement. It looks like my hands are opening and closing, but they're not. What is happening is I'm bringing my breath down into the belly. And as I imagine my belly being filled with air, like there's a balloon inside expanding. And as I breathe out, I just let go of the air there. And so all we're doing when our hands are facing the sky is as the belly fills with air, it's like the whole breath expands the hands to about our shoulder width. And then as we breathe out, the hands come back and they're sort of about our head width apart. We repeat that three times. So it's the body's breath that's moving the hands. It's not an independent arm action. So that's really important. Tai Chi never just moves an arm. Everything's integrated. So let's try and we start with our feet together. Focus, lovely, even weight on the heel and the ball. Body upright. And let's begin. We put all of the weight into the right foot and just separate your feet shoulder width. Sorry, you can't see my feet. <laughs> and then we're double weighted. So sink your shoulders. When you sink your shoulders, the arms are like a seesaw. The arms float up, shoulder height. Sink your elbows. That's how the hands come up in front of our heart. So three breaths in and out. So as we breathe in, expand. Out, relax. Three breaths in. Good. Good. Now, keep imagining there's a ball between our hands as we pass the ball forward. Keep holding that ball as the hands lower down and then the hands beside us. Shift the weight to the right, bring the left foot in. Great. Focus, lovely, even weight on the heel and the ball. Body upright and let's begin. We put all of the weight into the right foot and just separate your feet shoulder width. Sorry, you can't see my feet. <laughs> and then we're double weighted. So sink your shoulders. When you sink your shoulders, the arms are like a seesaw. The arms float up, shoulder height. Sink your elbows. That's how the hands come up in front of our heart. So three breaths in and out. So as we breathe in, expand. Out, relax. Three breaths in. Good one. Good. Now, Keep imagining there's a ball between our hands as we pass the ball forward. Keep holding that ball as the hands lower down and then the 
hands beside us, shift the weight to the right, bring the left foot in. Great. We do need to start our cool down, so that's just a tiny taste, but we'll go into a lot more depth with that movement. Our cool downs, hands drop down, we're moving, we're bending the hip, the knee and the ankle just by lifting our knee up, and it's a bit of a leg massage. It is called punching thighs, but I hate the name. I think it should be called gravity dropping your hand onto your leg. <laughs> the minute we say punching thighs, some people get a bit too enthusiastic. It's just gravity dropping the hand down to give the leg a massage. Maybe the sides are a little bit tight or the top. Radio. The next one is you actually stretch your toes out, stretch your hands out and relax. Good. Stretching out and relax. Stretch and release. We always finish with one of the same as the shoulder exercises, arms up and pushing down. Good. So remember, it's like we trace around the outside of a ball. And then when we're on top of the ball, we push it down. Great. We can sink into the legs if you like or not. Up and down. Good. And All right. I'll invite you to come and take a seat. We've also worked our arms quite a lot today. So I would like us to have a bit of an arm massage. So if we have our hands just resting on our lap, we start at our shoulder and we very gently pat down the arm, trying to ensure every part of the arm has had contact made all the way down to the fingers. Start right up at the shoulders, gentle but firm tapping down, moving the chi down the outside of the arm, gentle but firm. Tapping down, fabulous. So now that hand, turn the palm up, just let it rest on the thigh. Start at the fingers and gentle but firm, tap it upwards, great. Starting at the fingers, according to Chinese medicine, the chi flows down the outside and up the inside. So we're just following the meridians to move the energy around, fabulous. Other side, palm is down. So start all the way up at the shoulder and tapping down. Great. Tapping down. Tapping down. Good. That's it. Now, palm is up and tapping up. Those tips, moving the chi upwards. Try to ensure every part of the arm has had contact made with it. Good. Okay, other arm, palm is down, start at your shoulder, and it's a firm stroking down. Stroking down, stroking down. Good, stroking down. And then palm is up, stroking up, stroking up, upwards, upwards. Great. Okay, other side, palm is down, downwards, downwards, stroking down. And palm is up, stroking up, stroking up, stroking up, and shaking up. Okay, um, depending on where we are, we might cool down or we might not. <laughs> so if you need to put a jacket on or something, now's a great chance to do so. So let's just take a moment, feet firmly planted on the earth like we are in our Tai Chi. Even weight on the right and the left side of the buttocks. Wherever the hands happen to rest, that's fine, so long as there's even pressure on the right and the left side. You're welcome to close your eyes, so long as you're not going to go to sleep or 
move into your imaginations, <laughs> try to stay present. If you are feeling a bit tired, just gaze at the floor because it just provides enough light to um, keep you alert and awake. It also provides a bit of privacy for everyone else on the call. Let's check into the body. We've been moving for nearly an hour. How does an hour of Tai Chi feel in our body? Perhaps there's points of ease in the body. Or perhaps there's some points of dis-ease in the body. Just noticing without any judgment. Become aware of our breath. Right now, what part of my body moves when I breathe in? And what part of my body moves as I breathe out? We know that the breath is always arising in this present moment. So when we become aware of the breath, we must be tuning into this present moment. This present moment happens so rapidly. There's actually a beginning, a middle and an end of our in-breath. And there's a beginning, a middle and an end of our out-breath. Can we capture, capture all of those parts of the breath? And then just observing what happens at the very end of our in-breath before it becomes an out-breath. And what happens at the very end of our out-breath before we breathe in again? An opportunity just to notice the entire cycle of breath. We invite you to breathe in and out. I have awareness for three breaths in and out. Just that knowing it's not controlling, it's just being with the breath in and being with the breath out. And when you're finished, if your eyes are closed, I invite you to open your eyes again. Come out of our very, very short sit. Changing our posture, having a break. Thank you so much for joining me today in my lounge room to play some Tai Chi and inviting me into your home uh, to also play Tai Chi. As we begin, let's end with our Tai Chi salute. So it's from the heart, sincere and heartfelt. I look forward to seeing you next session. Thank you.